Hello there, friends. Welcome to another episode of our weekly Bible study podcast. I'm Scott Wakefield, lead pastor at First Christian Church, joined by... Ah! Who's going first? Tyson. Tyson at the Greenville campus. And Bob Radink at the South Green. All right. I thought, hey, let's do this that and was, let you fight. That's great. But we didn't fight because we like each other, but, right? That's right. That's what we're going with. Um, we are in <laughs> Exodus. 21st chapter will be in verses 12 through 17, Exodus 21, 12 through 17. We're in section of laws. Um, but first, very important, how do you feel about uh, socks and sandals? Not separately, together. To, right, at the I, same was, time. I was about to, because socks are great and feet. sandals are great. You know, as long here's here's where I draw the line. This is may be you, where we fight. Is when you do it. <laughs> this is the place. When you wear socks and you wear flip flops that then get in between your big toe and the rest of your toes, and you look like a camel. That's where I'm starting to cross the line. Look like a camel. <laughs> <laughs> Just lost. <awesome. laughs> I'm not sure really anybody was counting that as a part of what we're considering, but that is. It was <laughs> bordering on absurd. You were thinking, and I was thinking, something like Burks. Yeah. <laughs> I never had camel in my mind. Never. <laughs> uh, what do you call those things, by the way? <clears throat> I call them flip-flops. Flip-flops? Yeah. Uh, what do you call a Frenchman who uh, wears those? Is this a joke? Yeah. Not Fli- like flip-flops? I don't know. Fli- um. <laughs> I, I'm, I've heard flip-flops. I call them flip-flops. Flip-flops, yes. Zoris. No, Have you ever heard that one? Never heard that uh-huh. one. Zoris. Z-O-R-R-I-E-S, I think. Is that French? Is, is it a brand? <laughs> like Kleenex? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know the, history, la of, la. I don't know the history of flip-flops. Um, but, but as for the general, like, socks and, and not the, 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 the thing between your toes, I, I'm all right with it. But I'm not going to do it, but, you know, fine. You're all right with it, but you're not going to do it? Yeah. It feels like you're not all right with it if you won't do it. Well, there's been times where my feet are cold and I might do it, but I don't. Uh, and, usually, I just put on shoes if my feet are cold. And it's like, you know, milking your goat in the mother's milk. You can't mix those two things together. <clears throat> and um, I just don't think that's right. I think well, that's eisegesis. I'm going to let okay. that, I'm going to let everyone stay confused on that. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> we're all already there. So you we were, we were lost at camel. That's you're, you're, we're. you're pro. Until you're con. Until you're camel. I'm pro until you're camel. And, I, and I'm totally against. So. Um, I've heard you talk about how Germans like um, socks and Birkenstocks. They, they do. They're obsessed with that. And I just never never felt the, the coolness of it. Never never came my way. So as a missionary in Germany, you didn't quite fully integrate into the culture? Yeah, that's probably what my problem was. <laughs> <laughs> that explains so much. All righty. Let's do it. We are in Exodus chapter 21, verses 12 through 17. All right. Somebody uh, read for us. I got it. I got it. Okay. Verse 12. Whoever strikes a man so that he dies shall be put to death. That's a great, great place to start off here. Yeah. We're going to hear a lot of good. Dying. But if he did not lie in wait for him, but God let him fall into his hand, then I will appoint for you a place to which he may flee. But if a man willfully attacks another to kill him by cunning, you shall take him from my altar that he may die. Whoever strikes his father or his mother shall be put to death. Whoever steals a man and sells him and anyone found in possession of him shall be put to death. Whoever curses his father or his mother shall be put to death. It feels like there's more going on than just just a bad word there. I don't know. But we'll get to that, I guess, maybe. You mean curses? Yeah. In verse 17? Yeah. I don't know. Just I, in the context. I will say that your voice inflection as you read that was well done. Thank you. I was about to say I was confused by one moment of your voice inflection where at the end of verse 14 you read it and you went, ah. Or, ah. I, I did. I did. Like, ah, what, what just, is that? Oh, it, I'm just it was feeling. Like, I'm just feeling it. Gotcha. Like, gotcha. All, this, all this death, all it's this heavy. capital punishment. Yeah. It's heavy. This yeah. is capital punishment. Yes. Yeah. Um, so... Let's jump back to the beginning here. Any context we need to note? We've done this section with some laws a couple mm-hmm. of times here before this, but coming off the heels of the Ten Commandments, right? Right. we're getting into applications of the Ten Commandments. Um, if Ten Commandments are prescriptive, 
uh, some of those prescriptive principles apply in descriptive kinds of ways. That's one of the ways that people talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, How does it affect your day-to-day life? And yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> We're starting to get into more specifics. Um, you know, thou shall not kill. Okay, so then when it happens, what, what happens? Yeah, mm-hmm. what kind of killing, what kind of uh, yeah. environment, circumstances, etc. cetera. Right. Um, I think it's also helpful um, to say that laws are, I'm working on some things that I'm planning for this Sunday. Um, Here's some guidelines to think about the laws that are helpful for us as New Testament, Jesus, people. (laughs) What do the laws mean? How do they affect us? What are they about? Um, What parts of them do and don't apply? Um, In generic terms, of course, the moral law of the Ten Commandments still obviously applies. Mm -hmm. And the principles behind them apply. Mm -hmm. But the civil and ceremonial um, don't in the same way. But yet some principles like what we're going to see here still apply. And yet no laws can bring about perfection, utopia. Right. Get get us back to Eden. That's right. I mean, we have a a government here, if we want to call it that, a, Mm -hmm. a theocracy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even in that, that wasn't the perfect environment. It mm-hmm. was ruled by God, of course, and he's perfect and he's holy. But the people there, and that's the situations that are being involved yeah. in that, it's not the perfect utopia or anything. They're still yeah. having to yeah. deal with. So it's interesting that the laws are reflections of God's character and nature, and we're supposed to obey <laughs> and uh, embody his holiness. Right. And yet we're living in a post-fall world where sin is a problem. And so these laws help restrain that. Yeah, I like how you, uh, you know, you're know you bringing out how it can't get us to utopia, it can't get us to Garden of Eden. Yeah, yeah. And if you think about that, uh, eternal life was there, thriving was there, and um, there was no death. Yes. And these first laws, the, these first... Um, um, group of laws, lots uh, of the laws. Group of laws. Groups uh, of laws. Are, are actually bringing death. Yeah. They're, they're about death and death bringing capital punishment yeah. to, to draw a clear distinction. Like, this isn't getting us back to Eden. Right. Yeah. Which is interesting. <coughs> I was just... <laughs> <laughs> I, I was trying to I was make waiting some for sort the cough of, to finish. I don't know. I, know. I was trying to make a joke. All right. The decent context. Verse 12. Yeah. Whoever strikes a man so that he dies shall be put to death. That's pretty clear. Yeah, this is a further application, of course, of the sixth commandment: "Thou mm-hmm. shalt not murder." You shall not murder. Mm-hmm. Um, this is saying what those consequences are if you do that. Yes, that's right. We're talking about consequences here. Um, it's put in a very emphatic form at the beginning of that mm-hmm. sentence. That is a: if this happens, this has to happen. In in essence, um, and interesting. So that he dies shall be put to death shall be put to death is dying, he shall die. Right, it has that weird way of how it's written in Hebrew. Yeah, emphasizing uh, once this happens, this continues to happen and death grows. And um, Same verbiage as the garden, uh, the day that you eat of it, you shall die, pretty sure. Mm-hmm. 217, I think. Mm-hmm. Dying, you shall die. Yep, I think. Uh, I think it's Genesis 2. Which is a very emphatic, very strong yes. statement. Um, uh, Two seventeen Genesis says, "In the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die." Yeah, same verbiage here. And that's the dying you shall die. You yep. said, mm-hmm. like, if we go back to the Hebrew, and it, it's yep. almost like if you didn't get it, I mean, if you don't really get the point, let me let me tell you, it, you will die, <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah, it's very emphatic. Yeah. Um. So. In verse 12, any Israelite hearing this would recognize those kinds of echoes from Mm -hmm. uh, creation Um, and those first commands of don't eat and if you do, death happens. Um, They would also be hearing though here, um, and we'll we'll see this much more, I'm not sure if it's just starting with this passage, but we'll see this continue to, to happen in the laws. The lex talionis, uh, or the eye for eye, tooth for tooth, uh, 
the retribution principle is a way people a lot, a lot of times talk about it, uh, where the, the, pun, the, the crime is made up for by the, the punishment coming from the crime. Um, so the one who does the crime is the one who pays the same cost of the crime so that they experience what the person that they wronged experience. Right. Like if you steal a sheep, um, yeah. you don't get your house taken away uh, and given to the person. You repay them a sheep. Yeah. Not only give theirs back, but you pay them another sheep. Yes. And yet, um, well, that's not, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I was going to just go further than what you said, which is good. <coughs> I'm not. Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That's a good um, idea. It wasn't just invented by the Bible. There were law codes, the Hammurabi, 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 you'll sometimes see code, uh, is the largest and most clear example of that in ancient history. Um, and that's from uh, Babylon, is that right? Mm -hmm. That one is. I have seen the Hammurabi code, by the way, in the British Museum. Nice. It's, it's like this big, huge uh, rock thing, right? It's, it's like carved rock. on this. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Now, if you could tell me that you could read it, that would be cool. <laughs> I could read the translation next to it. <laughs> the cuneiform in translated British, into English. English? English? I, nope, nope, no, no. <laughs> um, and I'm sure that it wasn't the real one. Oh, uh, reproduction. Yeah. Got to hate those reproduction. Uh, <laughs> those British, Hammurabi steals. <laughs> British people, they just change things up. So uh, the principle here, of course, is life is sacred. Right. Yeah. Made in God's image, life is sacred. Taking the life of somebody else is denigrating the character and nature and image of God. Yeah. Um, We're not going to get there today, but a little bit later, uh, the same things are played to, uh, applied to slaves. Mm -hmm. If you kill a slave, mm -hmm. it's the, the, the same equality of, of value of life. Mm -hmm. And Hammurabi, or however you say his name, his laws were were good at that time, and and there were, you know, um, what's the word that you say that it's that that wasn't happening in other nations. But when he when he passed those laws, it was wow, that this is new. This is kind of a new thing. But God takes a lot of the, those laws and takes them further than what was what was accepted in those laws. Right? Is that what I'm understanding? Like a lot of those laws <coughs> that Hammurabi mm -hmm. wrote would deal with certain groups of people and God is saying okay yeah that, that's nice that it's certain groups of people but my laws deal with all people you kill yeah. all people this is what's going to happen to you yep um, yeah and there are some really important contrasts uh, from these laws in Hammurabi all right and and some similarities too like he would say if you kill an aristocrat this is this is what's going to happen to you right well, mm -hmm. God said if you kill anybody mm -hmm. right that this is what's gonna you know you shall surely die yep it doesn't distinguish you know and we will see exactly that later on in the text so uh <coughs> verse 13 wait 13 mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> i'm suddenly totally unaware of what we're doing <laughs> surprise surprise but <coughs> this is an exception <laughs> thank you this is an exception first christian church then there's a clarification uh 12, 13, and 14. Exception is verse 13. But if he did not lie and wait for him, if it's not premeditated, but God let him fall into his hand, which from Hammurabi and insurance uh, companies is an act of God. Yep. Verbiage used there. Mm -hmm. um, then I will appoint for you a place to which he may flee. This is, I think, the first hint of what becomes cities of refuge, where the manslayer, man... Slayer can uh, stay until the congregation judges the case. Manslayer is similar to our modern manslaughter. It's not premeditated. But, yeah, if a man willfully attacks another to kill him by cunning, in other words, if it is premeditated, verse 14, you shall take him from my altar, which is a weird phrase, that he may die. What does you shall take him from my altar mean? <clears throat> well, there's this uh, biblical example. I can't remember. Is it Jehu? I can't remember now. Jo he, Joab. 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 He was running from, I get all those. It's one of those uh, four-letter J's. <laughs> right, yeah. That's exactly how I'm feeling. <laughs> it does uh, seem like that sometimes. So then Saul was, was, was after, uh, oh, no, it's not Saul, is it? It's David. It's David. 
um, he goes and grabs the altar to, to save his life. Yeah, holds on to the horns of the altar, I think is what it says. Yeah. There are two or three examples of that in the scripture, like that where it says, ho holding on to the horns of the altar. So it's yeah. a picture of the place of sanctuary. He's trying to get safety, mercy. Mer yeah. yeah, begging for mercy. And yeah. God says, no, you don't, you don't get to have that privilege. When you premeditate. When you premeditate, you yeah. kill by cunning, you don't get that, you will die. And this was an ancient Near Eastern uh, way of thinking about um, getting off without dying. Right. And, yeah. uh, that precedes this because I think uh, you, you mentioned something funny about this, like uh, in a movie when they're coming after you and uh, oh yeah, the criminal runs into the church. Yeah, the criminal right, runs yeah. into a uh, cathedral or something, and yeah. the police are like. Oh, we can't go in there and right. get them. I, I've I've seen that a couple times in a, in a movie. Yeah. And so as a kid, I'm like, why not just go in and get them? He's right there. I know. I, I've I have had that <clears throat> exact experience where I'm like, I mean, okay, I, I get it. Like, you're hiding in a church building, but right. uh, why would that help you? Well, the think the thinking was like you said that um, maybe the the deity of the temple will help me, um, or and this is going to sound a little macabre. Uh, you hold on to the altar, and um, they don't they don't want to desecrate the temple by, you know, getting blood everywhere. Sure. So uh, they're not going to try to kill me here. Yeah. Um, that was kind of the thinking. And so that similar kind of idea is here where God says, take him away from the altar that he may die. You know those competitions where if you hold on to the truck long enough and then you win the <laughs> truck, that's kind of yeah. what I'm envisioning. And you win the Hold on to those horns yeah. long enough, yeah. then you might get your freedom. Right. The, the, uh, I don't know where that came from, guys. I'm that's sorry. really good. That's really good Bible interpretation. Right no, there. I've thought about the same thing. How long does he have to hold on before right. the, the guards or the police or whatever they are, like, say, okay, fine. Well, while we're going this route, I, in my head, I see somebody doing this, and they're pulling him. Right. right. From the, <laughs> and they, got, they got his legs, like, and he's yeah. like, ah! <laughs> And he's... Totally horizontal. Yeah. Um, but God says, um, yeah, rip him off the uh, altar, the altar because he deserves death. He's going to die. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything else there about 12, 13, and 14? That's a pretty good start. That's a good start. Okay. Um, now, we didn't say this, but the only connection that these verses have, it's not that they're all about like do not murder, but they are about things like that. Um, that then earn capital punishment? They're all about the punishment being death. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's the, the common uh, thing here. Um, just worth saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and are you saying just these few verses here or all Yes, just our 12 whole, through 17. Our whole passage today. Yeah, just today's passage. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then 15 changes it a bit. It says, whoever strikes his father or his mother shall be put to death. I think you said something earlier about Hammurabi. Oh, yeah, being similar, different. Um, the word strike here is a, a vicious attack with great force um, that can result in death. But usually that strike was not punished by death like everything else we've read. Um, so what's interesting is you're talking about the Hammurabi difference. Hammurabi didn't say whoever strikes father and mother shall be put to death. It says, in essence, whoever strikes his father doesn't include mother. Whoever strikes his father um, shall have his hand cut off. Yep. So it was less strict and it was, it was not honoring to the mom. mother right. equally. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's the, the gist of where I was headed with all that, which is yeah. this is really actually quite a radical commandment. Yeah, okay. Or, sorry, law. Let's say law. Because it's including the father and the mother. Uh -huh. Yeah. And and it says you're going to be put to death. Yeah. Which is... Not just getting your hand chopped off. Which seems extreme, of course, to us, but I think a little bit of perspective about the time and the culture. Um, not only are they supposed to be fruitful and multiply, but that was survival as well right. in a tribal world where... Being fruitful and multiply is how they exist and continue to live, and um, and so honoring father and mother that was a part of protecting all that. structure was important. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean it was literally important. And God for is their emphasizing survival. that, like yes. mother, father. You, yes, 
you do anything against both, not just one, but both, that's serious stuff. Because um, the family unit is the basis for right, yeah. uh, the societal structure, strength of the people, and literally also for survival. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Uh, you know, one, one thing I'd also like to draw out here is that word strikes. You know, we, we, oh, yeah. might, we mm -hmm. might think like if I just slap my dad, you know, a, a, I should deserve to die. Well, if you look at how the strike is being used in this context, mm -hmm. all these strikes here are pointing to something that could threaten their life. Mm -hmm. Whoever strikes a man so that he dies. Um, when men quarrel and one strikes the other with a stone or that his fist and the men does not die. But so so his, his, his life is at least threatened in that moment. Mm -hmm. And so in the context, this is, this is a, a big deal. It's not just a, getting a little tiff with your dad. Yeah. Which is kind of disappointing <clears throat> because, you know, if I get in a little tiff with my boys, you know, I can like, tell them, like, the Bible says this. <laughs> then I'd be taken out of context. So. Yeah. So you can hit them, they can't hit you. Is that what you're saying? Right, yeah. Good uh, job. Good job, Dad. I don't like this. I don't nope. like this where it's okay. going. Uh, that's why we need the Bible. That's, that's, that's right. Oh, that's, oh okay. okay. I see okay. where you're going that's with good. that now. That's good. Turn it around. I'm not sure that's where you were going originally, but that's good. <laughs> good reframe. <laughs> um, verse 16, whoever steals a man and sells him. Uh, and this is the context here of slavery, right. uh, of uh, mercenary slave trade. Yeah. Whoever steals a man, uh, a man stealer is the, the way that scripture will say it, uh, to talk about uh, slave trade, mercenary being wrong and bad. I kind of wish we still called it that instead of kidnapping. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, we do say kidnapping um, as if it means everybody, but we don't think that. It, it sounds to me like it's just a kid. Right. I've never broken the word apart until just now. My brain's always just heard kidnapping, but kidnapping? Oh. Okay, let's keep let's continue. <laughs> I have a joke for that, but we need to go on. Well, I was, I was, yeah. <clears throat> so whenever wh whoever steals a man and sells him, anyone found in possession of him shall be put to death. Uh, so this is also radically different than Hammurabi, uh, because Hammurabi code and when we say Hammurabi code, it's the most popular, it's the largest, it's the most well known. And so it makes sense that the <clears throat> contrast would be there. Um, but it's also speaking to what the world gets wrong. Um, I think that's a huge point. It's, 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 that's big. Yeah, it's a big deal. Um, Hammurabi Code said that you're not allowed to kidnap, man steal um, an aristocrat. An aristocrat. <laughs> I was thinking of the Everybody Disney movie, of course. Everybody wants to be a cat. Wow. Um, <laughs> we're doing great. Um, so you get in trouble if you... This is what I was talking about earlier with the aristocrat. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did you say aristocrat? You I did. Probably. I didn't say cat, but I did say... Cr cr yeah. So... so <laughs> we're struggling now. We are. <laughs> so you're saying that the, the but, Hammurabi yes. uh, code mm -hmm. had like different levels of... Right. of yeah. uh, like class structure and class the structure. consequences for... Yes. For yeah. kidnapping or killing those different levels. Yeah. Right. And God is saying, no, we're all people. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Just like the father and mother difference. Mm -hmm. um, it's in law 14 of the Hammurabi Code. And just for the record, for the nerds, who care? Um, you'll sometimes come across English translations of this law, and it says something like the son of a man. And so it sounds like, oh, just a kid who's the son of a man. That's a, that's a phrase that has to do with uh, a certain level of society, the aristocrats. So, just for the record, mm -hmm. if you're you know, reading any Hammurabi, which you've probably memorized later this week, I was I was going totally, to totally. Um, so, like we talked about with the ending someone's life, uh, who is creating God's image, is a form of um, usurping God's role only and denigrating and desecrating what's sacred. Um, man stealing is like that too, uh, because. It is showing contempt for God and uh, that God's natural processes that are supposed to be a family, um, you're undoing and you are taking away even those children's, those children's, <laughs> that family's source of care and protection and guidance. Yeah. So that's underneath a lot of this too. 
Uh, lastly, whoever curses his father or mother shall be put to death. Uh, curses there is the opposite of honors in the fifth commandment. Uh, honor, father and mother is a, we talked about that being a weighty, valuable, uh, give honor and respect in the way that they are valued uh, with that weighty term. And then this is like, not weighty, it's light. To make light of, to regard lightly. So it's the opposite of uh, honor father and mother. This one, to be honest, for me, was the hardest. Like I get verse 15 and, and what you said, Tyson, and when he's striking it, um, they're, he, they're putting that, – that, that person's putting his father and mother, mother's life in jeopardy. In verse 17, it sounds different. Mm-hmm. So it's a struggle for me to uh, yeah. fully understand what's happening here and why, why that deserved death. And that's why when I finished reading, I said, this feels like there's more going on. Right. Um, because of the context, of course. And I know there is more going on. I'm not questioning yeah. God's word at all. It's just in, in our context, in my mind, that's something that is hard to understand. Yeah. So. It's got, it's got to be more than just a loose word that slips. Um, Do you have that, any at least that's, for that's what I'm telling myself. I think he has some wisdom. Are you trying to set me up for this? No. No. We're, we want answers. I honestly don't know. <laughs> oh, I thought I'm you were willing just like, to say that on a podcast. Like, let me put I it on a platter know. for you. We want answers, Scott. Um, okay. Hammurabi has a similar law. And if you even say something like, you're not my mom, you're not my dad, which sounds funny, you know, in movies nowadays, but it is actually a way of saying, the way God made me a part of your family and is supposed to be how I'm cared for, I don't care about that. And uh, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to be who you... Raising me to be? Yes, exactly. Um, so it's a way of disowning parents. Okay. And um, so it's saying much more than, you know, a, a curse. So it's a further threat to the family structure, family unit. Sure. Family societal. safety. Yes. Societal, it's uh, anti be fruitful and multiply. Mm-hmm, okay. It's anti human flourishing. It's making sense. It's actually anti my own flourishing. Right. Um, if I'm cursing my parents, um, disowning my parents. And the Hammurabi Code says, cut off that kid's tongue. The scriptures say, um, like it did with the striking father and mother, this is so important that the child should be put to death. Um, Leviticus 20 says, uh, 29, anyone who curses his father or mother shall surely be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother. His blood is upon him. Hmm. Uh, Deuteronomy has a long quote. So this passage is not only um, helping us understand the value of life, but it's also the value of the family structure and how important that is in the eyes of God? Is mm-hmm. that what I'm understanding? Mm-hmm. How he's made the world for our That good. order. Mm-hmm. And that. Do you think that a case could be built that Jacob did this when he stole his brother's blessing, deceived his father, and then thusly, because of his threat on his life, mm-hmm. abandoned his family? So that in what you're saying, mm-hmm. like that could be fit on, on the story of Jacob. Yeah. Okay. Similar, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Now he didn't. He didn't face death. Right. Which I think is another, another testament that you know, in some of these cases, not all. You didn't see death always happening. It was a case by case thing. David kills. You know, he's he's involved in murder and adultery, but he his life didn't. He, his life wasn't taken. Yeah. Um, there's other cases like that. I do think it's it's a uh, giving up one's birthright, like yeah. for a bowl of soup kind of issue. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But yeah, so there are some exceptions, but the main point is, you do this, you're gonna die because you've just messed up the whole yeah. order of things. Yes, mm-hmm. it's going anti-creator. Yep. Mm-hmm. In a way that, in a way that is uh, disowning your relationship and responsibility to God. That's how it's seen yeah. here with father and mother. and It's making sense now. That. Yeah. Um, application time. We've probably got like three minutes. 
one thing we see is, uh, like we've already said, um, there there is a there is a high level of God valuing life. Yes, sacred. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. so much that He's protecting it with these laws that if if you cause others to lose life, yes. you, you'll lose yours as well. Yes, and I think that's a form of like we were just saying about uh, cursing father and mother is sort of disowning your responsibility and relationship to God. Um, it's a similar form of trying to like usurp his place. Mm-hmm. Like, like God decides it's appointed for man to die once and after that judgment. Mm-hmm. Um, Hebrews 9. So those kinds of, like God alone decides that stuff. Um, and so it's acting like him in that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, upending the creator, creature, and we see a window of his sovereignty at the beginning uh, or the middle of verse 13. But, but God let him fall into his hand. You know, so it's, we see all through that God is watching. God sees this. He, he knows all that's going on, mm-hmm. whether it's an accident that, that what's being referred to in, in verse, the beginning of verse 13, or if it's done willfully, God is seeing all these things. He is in control. Um, and he has. He has the right to make... To, to make the judgment of what those consequences will be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think, and, and this kind of hits on what you were saying earlier about, we see early on in the laws a lot of death. Mm-hmm. Um, to allow sin to grow in our lives and in the world, because laws are about restraining sin and evil, right? Um, and so to allow sin to grow is to welcome death. Is to say yes to death, is to mm-hmm. to say I'm pro death, <laughs> even like spiritually on the inside, right here. Um, I think of James one fifteen. Desire when it is conceived gives birth to sin. Fully grown brings forth death. And I, I think that's a and so the capital be, punishment. You're saying the capital punishment in these examples is is the cutting off of that sin, so it doesn't grow anymore. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, that's well said. That's well said. It's good. All right. That's gold. I like it. Thanks. Gold, Jerry. Um, That's good. All right. (laughs) Let's pray and be done. Okay. (laughs) Lord, thanks for your word. Thanks for these friends. Thanks for the chance to come together and uh, learn about your character and nature. Uh, We're grateful that you give us guidelines and you help us to learn. Uh, We ask that you would continue through your spirit to help us to restrain sin and evil in our own lives and in our relationships with others around us so that uh, human life would be sacred, uh, so that we would uh, have dominion in the the sense that you uh, tell us to steward your world around us for the sake of human flourishing and for your goodness to grow. We are grateful for Jesus, who makes all of that actually possible. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 See you next week.